Hello you guys, I am Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. I'm so excited. Today is video one of our t-shirt quilt along. Every Sunday I'll be releasing a new video and we're going to walk you step by step on how to make a very simple basic t-shirt quilt. Who's ready to get started? First things first, let's have a little chat about the different types of shirts that you can put into your quilt. I have a stack of sweatshirts that belong to my Nana, and these are also some of her t-shirts. I do have a couple of very lightweight knit shirts that she loved to wear and that remind me of her, and so I'm going to include them in even though they're not technically a t-shirt. <laughs> but it also will show you how easy that any types of the materials that we're using here today can be included into your quilt. I have 20 different shirts. If you have shirts that you want to use that have logos on the front and back, you'll need less. But altogether, you'll need a, tw uh, a total number of 20 different blocks. So grab your shirts and uh, your pair of scissors. Yes, we're using scissors for this part. And I'm going to bring you over to the cutting table and I'm going to show you how I cut apart both a long sleeve and a short sleeve shirt, getting them ready for the stabilizer. All right, we are set up at the cutting table. I have my scissors and I have my ruler. This is the template ruler that we're gonna be using. It's from OmniGrid, it is the 15 inch ruler. So if you have this, it's kind of handy to have around while you're cutting your shirts. You know uh, how much extra material you're leaving yourself on the sides. The first thing I like to do is to go ahead and cut my sleeves if I have a long sleeve shirt. We're going to go ahead and get rid of any of the extra material there. And I just start by cutting away from the seam straight up. Okay, we have gotten rid of our, our long sleeves. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut along this top seam right through the collar straight across. All right, so we have separated the shirt at the top. Now because this is a sweatshirt, it's easier for me to go ahead and get rid of this little ribbed band at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off real quick. When you're cutting t-shirts, you will not have to do that part. And now it'll be really simple to cut straight up the seams. To do that, I like to grab the shirt from the center of the front and the center of the back and open the shirt so that now this is the front center and this is the back center and we're going to cut right up the side seam of our shirt separating the back from the front. Alright, this is our back. We will move that to the side. And now you can see we have just the front of the sweatshirt with plenty of room to work with. This will be our finished block. You can see we have extra. We'll do one more sweatshirt together. We're going to put this over in the pile that we're using. Again, we're going to cut up off the sleeves, away from the seam. The reason I say that is because some sweatshirts are smaller. If you're working with smaller shirts, sometimes if the sweatshirt is smaller, you're going to need some of the sleeve material that goes beyond this seam here. We have plenty of room to work with with these shirts, 
but sometimes, like I said, if you do have a smaller shirt, you'll want some of this material here. So cut away from your seam when you're cutting off your sleeves. We're gonna go ahead and cut this top seam. We'll cut off this ribbed band. And again, we're grabbing from the center of the front, center of the back, open that back up, and cut right up your side seam. Again, we have the front of the sweatshirt that we're going to use. Now let's take a look at doing some t-shirts. This is the t-shirt we're going to use. I want to save this small front logo for maybe another project down the road and I'll be using the logo from the back. Again, we're going to start by cutting along the top seam. Because this is a short sleeve shirt, I'm not going to even bother cutting anything off of the sleeves. And we're going to open it at the bottom, grabbing the two centers and cutting right up the side seam. I like to cut mine individually, opening up the bottom so that I can see exactly where I'm cutting. I have cut shirts before where I just cut both seams at the same time and that the, the front of the shirt was underneath and I cut right into a logo Luckily, that was one of my own t-shirt quilts I was working on, and unfortunately, after that, I could not use that logo. So now I just cut both seams separately. It only takes a second, but it saves you some heartache down the road. And opening up at the front of the shirt, you can see we have plenty of space for that logo and we will do the knit shirt that I showed to begin with this shirt you could use either side they're both the same you could use both sides again it's a short sleeve so we're not going to worry about cutting off the sleeves we'll just start up at the top Grabbing from the center again, exposing the side seams and cutting straight up. So this is how simple it is to cut apart your shirts. I would use the same technique no matter what type of shirt it is, even if it's a button front shirt, it's still the same. I would button the buttons first before you cut it apart. It makes your life way more simple. But you'll see, starting up at the top and cutting apart, then opening to the sides and cutting those seams. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut all of my shirts apart and that next we're going to meet at the iron and I'm going to show you how you stabilize your shirts. We have all of our shirts cut apart and before we go to the iron, I wanted to talk a minute about the stabilizer that I'm going to be using on the back side of our shirts. My favorite is the uh, Pellon P44 fusible interfacing. 
This can be found at Joann's and I personally like to purchase it by the bolt and it is 99 cents a yard. I like to use a half off coupon on mine and uh, that saves you quite a bit of money. For this quilt you will need about 10 yards of interfacing and what I like to do before I even go to the iron is go ahead and pre-cut all of my sheets of uh, stabilizer so that when I get to the iron I'm just pressing. So you'll see here I have 20 sheets. They're already pre-cut from our bolts. And I like to give myself some working room because when the shirt is upside down at the pressing surface, sometimes you cannot really see where that logo is. So if you give yourself some extra stabilizer, more than the actual size of the block that you're going to cut, that allows you some play room when you get to go, uh, cutting your logo out so that if you have to move to one side of, or the other, you're still within that stabilizer on the back side of your shirts. And we all know that uh, logos are not always printed in the center of your shirt. Uh, I've done a mini of quilts and the logos are off centered by a little bit. And uh, so we just want to make sure that when we cut our stabilizer, we give ourselves plenty of working room. I have all 20 sheets and I am warming up the iron and we're going to start pressing. Here we are at the iron. We have our iron set at a cotton setting and I have a pressing sheet which is just a scrap piece of muslin that I have uh, laying around and we have our shirts cut apart and our stabilizer is all ready to go. We're ready to go ahead and stabilize our t-shirts. First thing I do is grab your t-shirt, make sure that the pretty side or the side with the logo is facing down. We're going to go ahead and lay it flat out on our pressing surface. And without stretching the shirt, we're just going to make sure that all the wrinkles are out and everything is laying flat. We're going to take our stabilizer. Now our stabilizer has two sides. It has a smooth side and the other side is bumpy. The bumpy side is the adhesive and that's the side that we're actually pressing to the back of our shirt. We're going to lay that down flat on our shirt. Now, the instructions do not call for the pressing sheet. I just personally like to use it because it helps my iron move around a lot easier. Uh, some stabilizers are different and the heat settings are different. Some of them, if your iron is too hot, will actually stick to the surface of your iron. I've used this stabilizer now for over two years and so uh, I don't find that that happens. However, I still like to use my pressing sheet when I'm ironing my uh, stabilizer. Make sure that you read the instructions for whatever type of stabilizer you're using. Next we're going to take our iron and we are pressing our stabilizer. Now each one is different and call for uh, different times that you actually heat set this. I think the one that we're working with calls for five to ten seconds. I could be wrong. I don't know. I've worked with this stabilizer so long that uh, I just know how long to uh, heat set everything. What I actually like to do is once everything is kind of pressed in place is turn the steam on and with my pressing sheet over everything it's going to protect my surface and that steam really helps bond the glue to the back side of my t-shirt.
and I'm not really dragging my iron over top of it over top of my material when I move I'm slightly lifting my iron up so it might look like I'm pressing or yeah pressing <laughs> ironing however I'm lifting everything up and when I set it down that's when it's really resting on the t-shirt Yep, when you look at your stabilizer, it should look like a solid sheet. And those little bumps that you could see before have disappeared. And that's when you know that your stabilizer is really well bonded to your t-shirt material. One thing that I want to note is that down the road, uh, after we've cut our blocks, if you cut down deeper to where... Uh, this part is actually loose. You can always go back and reheat set that and adhere the adhesive to uh, your shirt. For now, we're just pressing within this pressing surface. So that is one shirt. I will do a sweatshirt this time. You can see this one was cross-stitched by my Nana. And it has all of the open stitching on the back. That's perfectly fine. You can use shirts that have sequins or beading on them. The only thing that I would recommend is that uh, any embellishments are not within the area that you're going to actually cut or within your seam allowance where you're going to actually sew. So if your shirt does have the embellishments, you're going to want to make sure when you're cutting your shirt to uh, not position your square or your embellishments within a quarter inch seam allowance. Again, the bumpy side is going down. And without stretching our shirt, we're just making sure everything is flat. I turn the steam off and I'm just setting everything in place. Now that everything is tacked down, I'll go ahead and turn my steam on. Again, I know that this method works for the type of stabilizer that I'm using. If you're using something different, you may not want to use the steam. Although this seems like a long, boring step uh, in the process of doing your quilt, if you have everything ready and set up to go, this really doesn't take that long. Even though this stabilizer is very, very lightweight, uh, it does a wonderful job of keeping all of your uh, materials from stretching. You know how the knits and the jerseys and sweatshirt material are very stretchy, you know, because they're the clothing. Uh, this, I really love this stabilizer for keeping all of that from stretching. Ooh, that's hot. Give that a look. 
it all looks very good. We're ready to go ahead and move on to the next one. And we'll do one more together. Let's see. We'll do another sweatshirt together. Again, I do have a video where I go more extensively into the stabilizing. Uh, that link is down below in the description box. Basically, it is this simple, you guys. Tack it down. And then I like to use my steam. My iron clicked off. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. Now I did have a friend of mine, Jackie, she's going to be making uh, her first t-shirt quilt, asked me a question about softener in the wash when she is pre-washing her shirts, getting everything ready. I always use softener in my laundry. I have to um, because I have really sensitive skin and I like really soft clothes and I've never had an issue with washing my clothes and using the softener and then turning around and preparing my shirts and using them in a quilt. So um, I'm sure that there are people who will uh, say that they would not use softener. I personally have never had an issue. I don't have an issue with the stabilizer sticking to my shirts that have softener. Um, I've never had an issue sewing the blocks together. For me, I say if you like softener, go ahead and use the softener in your wash when you're pre-washing your shirts. Most definitely, if you are using a brand new shirt for your quilt, you will want to pre-wash that shirt before you start in this process because a lot of those shirts have dyes in them. And I've used like brand new burgundy shirts in a quilt and at the end of the process when the quilt was finished I washed the quilt and the burgundy shirt did bleed into some of the other squares. And so uh, definitely if you're using a new shirt go ahead and pre-wash that. And just like that you guys our third shirt is stabilized. You can see how nice and flat it makes the shirt and there is no stretch within this sweatshirt. So, even though it seems like a very tedious, time-consuming process, you'll most definitely want to use the stabilizer. Remember, if you're using something different than what I'm using in my video today, make sure you read the instructions. And um, if you have any questions, you guys, I would be glad to help you out and to try to answer your questions. Leave them below in the comment section. Again, you can jump over to Facebook and find me there at Lisa Cape and Quilts. I look forward to um, finishing these up and meeting you back here next Sunday where we're gonna start cutting out our blocks. I will show you how to center your logo. Use the template or the square ruler with a rotary cutter and if you don't have that, I'm also going to show you how to cut out your blocks using just a straight edge ruler and your cutting mat. So no matter what, you are covered. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. 
I'm looking forward to the rest of this quilt along series, you guys. Thanks for joining me in my first video, and uh, we will see you next week, okay? Bye, you guys.